بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ٹوڈے وی ول اسٹڈی دا تھرومبو ایمبولک کنڈیشنس ان ہیومن باڈی ان دا پریویس لیکچر آئی ٹول یو اباؤٹ دا ڈفرینٹ بلیڈنگ ڈس آڈرس وٹ پرابلم از کریٹیڈ اینڈ ہاؤ اٹ از کریٹیڈ اف دیئر از excessive bleeding in our body today we will discuss the problem if the clot persists there it doesn't dissolve or due to any reason excessive clot mechanism becomes activated what problems can be created and how it is treated this is the main topic for that we should understand what is the thrombi and emboli an abnormal clot that develops in a blood vessel is called a thrombus so in a blood vessel if any abnormal clot formation take place there that is the thrombus and if it detaches from that side and circulate along the blood flow that then it becomes emboli what complication that is created some of the complications they are due to the thrombus formation that is abnormal clot formation that will be locally if it detaches and become emboli then it through the along the blood flow it will go to the smaller capillary side and can occlude the blood there so that it can block the blood flow completely and obviously any vessel whenever it is blocked and blood supply to the organ or the tissue that is blocked obviously that will become dead so it is a very dangerous condition if there is any abnormal clot formation in our body take place number one thing and it becomes much many folds more worst if it become embolus so that <clears throat> it can dam along the blood flow it can go to any site for example heart or for example <clears throat> brain there it can block the blood supply and the transient ischemic attack take place so how it can be created you can see in this animation there is an abnormal clot formation is as it is entering the normal blood flow it can detach in small pieces and these small pieces can occlude the blood vessel <clears throat> and stop the further blood flow this is the journey of the embolus if any problem in the lungs is created in the legs created so that through the venous blood any embolus travel and comes to the right side of the heart going to the lungs there it can block the pulmonary vessels i will discuss this especially this problem in much more detail but here just focus that how 
the thrombus is formed and how the detached clots they come in blood flow and reaches to different organs this is the ct scan in which you can uh, see these flowing thrombi uh, flowing emboli in the normal blood flow obstructed these clots these are which are going along the blood flow to different organs the causes for this type of the condition mainly either the rough and endothelial surface if through any infection or through the arteriosclerosis process trauma the surface of the blood vessel become rough that will be as we have discussed uh, before the platelet plug formation that uh, if there is injury or the smoothness of the wall that is disturbed it can attract more and more platelets and other things so if there is any problem and so that the um, endothelial surface of the blood vessel that becomes roughened it will attract more and more abnormal accumulation of not only the platelet but also other uh, cholesterol and other things like that so that it will uh, it will disturb the normal blood flow and secondly if the viscosity of the blood that increases it slows down the normal blood flow we have a number of different many many hundreds causes for this condition and many causes for this condition so by different diseases we can have the thromboembolic condition normally what happens in the leg in the legs we have this special type of the valves these are the calf muscles so that with your walking the pressure exerted by the muscles over these vessels pushes the blood towards the right side of the heart through any disease condition these vessels and these uh, valves of the vessels they become incompetent or become hard or through the long standing what happens the flow of the blood that is disturbed or slows down it becomes difficult to flow towards the right side of the heart so that it accumulates whenever it accumulates you can see from here also that these cells they are assisting the flow of the normal blood flow and assisting the um, normal blood vessels if the flow that is disturbed slows down so that there is accumulation of the blood in the legs that creates the problem or the vessel wall that becomes hardened as like in deep vein deep vein thrombosis you can see the accumulation of different materials over the abnormal site so that more and more hardened area that is formed blood clot or thrombus forms in one or more of the deep vein of your leg 
creating the condition which is called the deep vein thrombosis or DVT. You can see it is not only making the vessel wall very much hardened, occluding the pathway of the blood cells, making normal blood flow very difficult and also uh, more and more blood will accumulate on the this on this side to make the condition more worse and more complicated what happens if there is rapid blue blood flow small pieces from this heavy clot that can be detached so that with the blood flow they go ahead and can occlude small blood vessels also. A deep vein thrombosis as seen in the right leg you can see here is a great risk for the pulmonary embolism. This condition I will tell you, I will discuss later on in following slides. But it can create embolus going towards the lung and creating the problem in the lung. Symptoms of a blood clot in the leg may be as a red, warm, swollen, painful leg. This you can see calf pain, discomfort, swelling, ulcer, rashes. Again, I want to show you how this type of the clot, abnormal clot, that increases in its width because of the accumulation of more and more cholesterol particles making a condition atherosclerosis and occluding the blood vessel completely. This is the detailed animation how the atherosclerosis a special condition in which the blood vessels become hardened you can see more and more accumulation of the cholesterol here making the vessel wall more and more hard and making the blood flow very much difficult and embolus can occur. Small pieces can detach from this side also. So if this condition occur, what happens next? It can go to the heart to create the problem in the coronary artery. It can go to the lung to create the condition that is the pulmonary embolism. Now, I am going to discuss the pulmonary embolism in much more detail. It is a blockage of an artery in the lungs of a substance that has traveled from elsewhere in the body through the blood stream. Sign and symptoms It may include shortness of breath, chest pain, particularly upon breathing in and coughing up blood and showing low blood oxygen level, rapid breathing, rapid heart rate. Obviously, if there is blockage to the pulmonary capillaries, locally what happens? The local area that will become dead. So that it will obviously affect your oxygenation of the blood and ultimately the function of the respiration. Again, very nice animation showing how the ambulance, 
ambulus going towards the right side of the heart and through that lodging into the pulmonary capillary blocking that area you can see here blocking that area and creating the dead piece that uh, dead local tissue of the lung once this happens now the effects you can check the difference of the size of the normal and affected lung this is the affected lung how much it is disturbed you can see the clear cut difference of the size of normal and affected and also the coloration of normal and affected lung so this is the condition of the pulmonary embolism some more animation to show you this is the plaque or thrombus and all these abnormal condition this is the clot when it gains more and more cholesterol it becomes plaque and this is the thrombus and it can be detached from here this condition may be treated with this anti clotting drugs for example aspirin a white color this you can see so that and it must be treated to avoid further complication and this is a very uh, serious condition as it can lead to the death of the patient one more condition that is the disseminated intravascular coagulation this is the same thing that abnormal clots they are there but the reason is septicemia due to the widespread endotoxin widespread bacterial infection septicemia is the sepsis of blood that is holy blood that is affected where uh, it is a widespread endotoxin which is going to affect the clotting mechanism as a result the condition is disseminated intravascular coagulation develops this condition often results from the presence of large amounts of traumatized or dying tissue in the body that releases great quantities of tissue factor into the blood abnormally excessive clot they are formed and also the whole clotting mechanism that is activated you can see the wide spread clot formation and also the detachment of different smaller small clots becoming the emboli plugging of a sm small peripheral vessels greatly diminishes delivery of oxygen or the nutrient to the tissue situation that leads to or exacerbates circulatory shock it is partly for this reason that septicemic shock is lethal in 85% or more of patients so the, the chain of the events that is firstly the bacterial endotoxin is in the in the body creating septicemia in the body and it can lead to the excessive clot formation in your body once locally these clots they become danger once they are detached from the local site the the wide spread emboli can occur and wide spread uh, further occlusion of the blood vessels can take place as in this condition wide spread clot mechanism occur and excessive emboli and thrombol thrombi they are there so it is going to affect not only the brain but also the heart but also the lungs and kidneys all over the body we have 
genetically engineered TPA which is the tissue plasminogen activator to treat these conditions. When injected through a catheter, catheter to an area where there is a thrombus, it is effective in activating plasminogen to plasmin, which in turn can dissolve some intravascular clots. For instance, if used within the first hour or so after thrombotic occlusion of a coronary artery, the heart is often spared serious damage. So, to treat these conditions, we can have TPA also. We can other, uh, we can have other um, medicines and other anticoagulants also. You can see how the occlusion of the blood vessel can damage the different and can create different conditions like acute coronary syndrome, transit ischemic attack and peripheral artery disease. In the heart, in the brain, in the, in the legs. This is the procedure how we can surgically remove any clot. If the catheter is passed into the blood vessel, then lodge there over the clot, then pushed from that side, you can see from here. Removal of the clots. Maybe you have heard about the stun, which are passed in coronary arteries. This is a very nice and um, latest technique which is the clot retrieval used for the patients of ischemic stroke. This and remove it. Now comes the anticoagulants which can be clinically used. Number one is the heparin. The most important thing about the heparin is that is it is naturally present in our body also and it can be used as a therapeutic uh, use and we can have outside the heparin, uh, outside also so it, uh, heparin is available at pharmacy also and it is uh, present already in our body also it is an intra intravenous anticoagulant commercial heparin is extracted from several different animal tissues this change in clotting time occurs instantaneously, thereby immediately preventing or slowing further development of a thromboembolic condition. And this action of heparin lasts about 1.5 to 4 hours. The injected heparin is destroyed by an enzyme in the blood known as heparinase. One more agent which is called the comirin and the comirin we uh, commonly use is the warfarin given to the patient the amounts of active prothrombin and factors 7 9 and 10 all formed by the liver begin to fall this is a comparison of heparin versus warfarin and to see the differences in uses, the 
playing are two example of each type of medical animation in 3D and 2D also. For the prevention of blood coagulation outside the body, what is the process that uh, previously we were discussing the inside the body, how we can prevent the abnormal coagulation and now how the blood is preserved and the blood coagulation <coughs> is prevented outside the body. As in different blood test we have to take the blood sample so that blood is collected in silicone siliconized containers often does not clot for one hour or more the reason for this delay is that preparing the surfaces of the containers with silicon prevents contact activation of platelets and factor 12 Conversely, untreated glass container allow contact and rapid development of clots. Heparin can be used for preventing coagulation of blood outside the body as well as in the body. Heparin is especially used in surgical process also. Like that we can have oxalate, compound and some other substances that deionizes the blood calcium. Negatively charged citrate ion is especially valuable for this purpose. Now, how we can check these mechanism, bleeding mechanism, coagulation mechanism? For that purpose, we have to go to the lab. and check the bleeding time and clotting time and also the prothrombin time. Through these tests, we can estimate the condition of either the coagulation or bleeding in our body, how these mechanisms they are. Either they are normal, within normal limits or exaggerated or abnormal results. So, to check these mechanisms, we have to test the bleeding time, clotting time and prothrombin time and you will do all these tests in the lab also. Here I am going to show you how the bleeding is going to occur from the injured site. This one. Now we are going to check the bleeding time and clotting time. For clotting time, the step one is a finger is lanced and a small drop of blood is allowed to accumulate. From here, the small blood drop occur. The time is noted and then blood is drawn up into a non heparinized glass tube so that the normal coagulation should occur Due to the contact of the vessel wall, it is going to, uh, to be clotted and now we will check the time. Once you prick the finger, you check, you, uh, you uh, note the time and starts the watch and then through this capillary, you draw it here inside. Then after two minutes, Small portion of the glass tube is broken off. Other pieces of tube are then broken off every 30 seconds. Then you are going to start its, um, the breaking the capillary tube and check the clotting mechanism. I, uh, how you are going to check it? Because of the formation of the fibrin thread. If the intrinsic coagulation pathway is functioning, normally strands of fibrin will be formed. And 
that will be checked the, uh, the, uh, up till that you check the time and after the formation of the fibrin thread you stop your practical the total time taken from the injury or pricking the finger to until the fibrin thread that is formed that will be noted and it will be the clotting time and for the prothrombin time it gives an indication for the concentration of prothrombin in the blood this is the animation for the thrombodynamics Again, for that purpose, to check the prothrombin time, blood removed from the patient immediately auxiliary so that none of the prothrombin can change into thrombin. Then a large excess of calcium ion tissue factor is quickly mixed with the auxiliary blood and so on. You will perform all these tests in the practical class yourself and you will check your bleeding time, clotting time and prothrombin time. And with that, we complete our today's lecture. So, for the next, we will inshallah start the new unit. With the completion of this lecture, we complete, we completely cover the blood unit also. So, with the next lecture, I will come to you with the new topic, with the new unit. Most probably, we will start the nerve and muscle.